So we are lucky enough to be here at Warlord HQ in the office of the great man, Mr. John Stallard, which I'm sure you've all heard of before. Thanks, man. Um, he's given us a little bit of his time. I, what I, I'm interested in, you've been in the, the figure manufacturer business for a long time now. It's your own company. It's a big... How many employees have you got here? 108. 108 people. I mean, we saw down in just the metal casting alone, there are seven and a half, eight, eight and a half casters. Well, that's one shift. There's two shifts, you see. There's two shifts? Yeah. So you've got 16 people casting, yep. and they said they did 16,000 figures a day. Quite probably. <laughs> that was an enormous number of metal figures to think about it. So it is. it's obviously it's a big company when you've got really premium brands like Bolt Action, which are clearly like headlines for you, Black Powder, another solid one. <clears throat> but what I was interested in is now you've kind of got that established business, you've been able to pursue what seemed to me like personal projects, things that you're interested in and want to see maybe get a bit more coverage. Um, one of the ones that really struck me was Cruel Seas. I, I, we reviewed that a while ago, and I was really taken by the by the art style that came in there. There's almost like a Commando Comics feel throughout the rule book, and little sidebars. All the British sailors look quite a little bit heroic. All the Nazi ones look a little bit sinister. It's woolly jumpers versus leather coats, um, and so forth. Was that was that what you were going for? Tell us a bit about how that came to life. Well, I think it's a very good spot, Mike. Uh, um, people of a certain age, I, <laughs> old gits like me and you, were both bought up a diet of Victors and Valiants and Hot Spurs mm. and Warlord comics. Mm. And all of them had their various heroes. And one of the heroes in the Victor comic was uh, Killer Kennedy. Killer Kennedy. And his Lieutenant Doyle, who was his, uh, his uh, sub-Lieutenant. And every week... They went out into the into the Atlantic or in, a, in a tiny motorboat and would destroy a secret German aircraft carrier which never existed. Oh, well, or, or a, a mighty battleship, or in a whole invasion fleet uh, using even more unlikely tactics than the week before. <laughs> right, uh, right. Sometimes with hand grenades, sometimes with pistols, yeah. sometimes by boarding them with sabers. Uh, well, and that's how you pipes. would do it, right? If and, you were uh, a boy. And uh, I thought the idea of these powerful motor torpedo boats was just. Utterly splendid, and mm. I got the Airfix, uh, the Airfix uh, Vosper T torpedo boat, mm -hmm. and a uh, Airfix E boat, which I've got over there in the corner, which I'll show you later on. And I just thought these powerful, wonderful machines um, uh, were interesting. Uh, and then my obsession grew more with the German E boats as I got to more to know how how they worked and uh, um, and they're beautiful machines. And how they? clever they were, and how well used they were, and how rare they were. Mm. And they didn't have very many of them. Because yeah, uh, they're quite expensive. Hugely expensive. And I was just reading about, uh, in 1939, or 38, um, 1939, sorry, um, uh, the uh, Ian Fleming of James Bond, yes. fame, he was in naval intelligence. And yes. he wanted to know, it was imperative that the Admiralty knew how fast an e-boat could go and they just didn't know so Fleming who was a well he was a bit of a pirate and a bit bloodthirsty and not a nice man I don't think but anyway he was on our side he uh, did, they they captured a Heinkel float plane a 115 Heinkel 115 mm -hmm. and they captured it and he had this plan to stuff it with British commandos or naval commandos um, in a float plane? Yeah, in a float plane. Fly it off the coast of Holland mm -hmm. with a smoke canister on the side on one of the engines, pretend to have engine trouble and land, an e-boat would come out, all the, the commanders would leap out, Tommy gun all the Germans to death, and then capture uh, the e-boat e e and take it back to uh, Harwich, um, all and tea, you know, tea and toast and crumpets for six o'clock. So you get maybe two commandos in this aeroplane, right? <laughs> well, no, it's quite one of the bigger ones. Okay. One of the bigger ones. Uh, and so they were going to go ahead with this really? hair, hair brain thing, uh, and, and at the briefing, uh, this young lieutenant said, "Sir," he said, uh, "What's the purpose again?" He said, "Well, we need to know how fast these blighters go." He said, "Oh, it's forty-two knots, sir." He said, "Well, how do you know?" He said, "It's in James fighting ships, nineteen forty-two." <laughs> just looking because up, they were trying to sell them. They were selling them around the world to the course, Dutch and the everyone. Course, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, "Ah, well, yes, I I knew that. Thank you. Well done." <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, so that was where my fascination came. And then history is great for those kind of stories, though, isn't you it? You can't make them up because no. they're always darker than you ever think. Ex exactly. So I thought, right, I want to. I, I oh, 30, 40 years ago, when I was 20, mm -hmm. uh, I bought some Skytrex. Um, uh, they used to do little metal MTBs. Yeah, in 1/600 scale. Yes. I and they were okay, 
but they were slightly disappointing because they just had sticks for guns and no crew. So you've got a gun on the front, but what is it? It's got to be a 20 mil or a 37 mil or a 40 mil. It's important if you're a gamer. If you're like a gamer, you, yeah. you, you need to know what it is. Mm. So um, I thought, well, if I do do it. So I thought, right, I'm going to do a game. It's my company. I'm going to do it. Me, me, me. So uh, I thought, right, let's do it one 300th scale. And I picked 300th because there's enough detail on them. So you could put crews on them mm. if you want. So this but, is 6 mil? Uh, yeah, 6 mil. Six uh, mil. There's lots of uh, 6 mil stuff out there, including landing craft and boats and things and, and yep. tanks. So you could do a combined arms type game. Mm -hmm. uh, and more importantly, you could tell what guns they had. Yep. And uh, so, uh, so Cruel Seas was born. I read as much as I went on a holiday trip around the Adriatic and uh, the Mediterranean whilst there writing this book. And whilst off uh, Tunisia and uh, off, uh, off all the Italian islands, even now, the car ferries and things are all just like F lighters. They're exactly the same, these shallow right. still. And I'm, I'm sure some of them are originally still going about as F lighters, these uh, landing craft which the Germans built in the hundreds, which because FX never made a model of them, you never knew about. Yes. Uh, you know, I knew yes. about everything else, but the, you know, they, they, 500 of these F lighters, you know, packing them with flat guns and armor and concrete and all manner and of And these are in the Mediterranean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, and what did they use them for? Uh, supplying, supplying, uh, I think they were built originally for uh, sea line. Operation and then they, then they transport them but, over land but, to the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, right. uh, that's all that went. Uh, so then I thought, you're right, so let's get some plastics made. So we got them tooled up, e-boats mm -hmm. and uh, MTBs. Yeah. And I have to say, my staff, much as I love them, were they thought I'd gone a bit mad. And it was seen as John's project. I said, well, mm -hmm. it is my project, but it is my They're train set. plastic kits, though. But, but it is my, pro it's, it's my project, yeah, my, my thing. So we did it, and I did the old thing of build it and they will come. Uh, if you can make the game quite exciting, and you get the artwork, which is lovely, and I, yeah. I went to really Peter, the I film. went to Peter Dennis, uh, who does a lot of our great illustrator, mm. lives just up in Mansfield, and I did want the, I did want the German commanders to look fairly sinister, like the U-boat commander in Dad's yeah, army. Clearly and, the uh, bad guys, right? Yeah, clearly the bad guys. Clearly the and bad guys. Uh, the Italian guy's got his hat on in a very jaunty manner, and the, yeah. and the Yanks got to corn pipe. And uh, anyway, good right. fun. A little, little, little bit of caricature. Yeah. Um, but the, the cover art, I wanted these e-boats and, and MTVs virtually ramming each other. Yeah. One's firing a Lanchester submachine gun at the German, and the guy in a sweater lobbing a Mills bomb at them. It's all exciting stuff. Trying to see how show how exciting that, that, how terrifying it must have been. But it's about daring do, it's uh, about... Oh, that, the actions, of course, they're all at night and you yes. wouldn't see anything until the last hundred yards. So that's, a, that's an interesting one you say about a uh, about night because one of the things as a, as a war gamer and, and an interest in, in World War Two and beyond is the realisation just how many battles happen at night mm. and how, how big a thing it is. And we don't... It's never going to look right on the wall, and I don't really know what to do with that information. Mm -hmm. in that, and I know a lot of systems, there are systems and mechanics around night fighting, there but they often really limit the game. Oh, you know, how you, Mike, you got it in one. I know that almost all these things were done at dusk or dawn, you know, at, 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 between those hours. Mm. But you don't... <laughs> To, to make it night fighting, you can never see each other. It is just as much of a game. No. At the end of the day, it's a game. Uh, I often used to think, why weren't the German e-boats completely stuffed by bow fighters, spitfires, hurricanes, and everything else? Because they weren't Isn't flying at night. The exactly. So they just stayed <laughs> yeah. in ha harbour. If they had gone out during the day, they'd be murdered by yeah, our... they're made of wood. You know, and when we did catch them, you know, uh, it was nasty. Yes. Uh, um, but... Uh, so yeah, that's Cruel Seas. It's done really, really well. It, we're, we're winding it down a little bit at the moment. I think we've mm -hmm. got all our releases out for it. The last thing we put out was that, uh, oh, uh, the, uh, was it not Cormorant? Uh, uh, the one with the uh, helicopter carrier that the Germans had in the Mediterranean. It was oh, really? an ex-Yugoslavian mine lair, but they have one of those little helicopters which they use for searching for British submarines. So we mm -hmm. made a model of that. And this, this will be a huge model in that yeah. scale. Will it? it's, it's, it's about, about, big, about that big. It's yeah. got some big guns on it as well, and it's pretty nasty. Yeah. And plus this, the Draco, the dragon, that's what it's called. Right. And uh, okay. yeah. But anyway, so yeah, it is fun doing a game that you've always wanted to do. Mm. And that's one I always wanted to do. And did you write the rules or did you make someone do that? I mean, no, I guess a commission. No, I, I wrote the rules for that one. Yes, yeah, I wrote that one. I said, on, on, that, on that boat. I just thought, simplest thing to do, we just take... Not 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 speed and just put it into centimeters. Yeah, you know, yeah. easy and it's and uh, yeah. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's a good fun game. 
Mm. You know, and, yeah, uh, it's definitely one. We've got the, the set, we've reviewed it. And the, mo the, the models are lovely. You said the plastics are lovely. They are beautiful plastics. They are. And, I, and I've got, so I've seen some of the bigger, re like the, got the German starter Navy. So that's got a couple of the bigger resin ships. Yes, and the uh, flagships and things. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. deadly in the game. Yeah. So what, the, always, this, the problem I'm having a bit with Cruel Seas is table size. Because I'm in my spare room, I've got a four foot table. Uh, that, uh, that's probably not quite enough room. Six would be better, six foot. Uh, you'd have to use, if you did the e-boats on the thing, the, the range gets bigger when you've got some of the bigger, I mean, the biggest thing you'd ever have would be a small destroyer, really. Anything mm. else would be madness. Yeah. Uh, though, but we know what gamers are like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. They will well, get we've got rules for it. I get, said, but it is this big. <laughs> exactly. A good yeah. target there. But uh, yeah, no, if you stick to the small ships, it works just well. Okay. It's, it's, it, yeah, you need a bigger table if you're going to go a bit larger. Definitely want to give that a look. So other things, the passions in my life was uh, my, my father brought me up in a diet of good, solid British military history. Right. Uh, right. His favourite regiment. thousand years of fighting the French, that kind of thing. <laughs> Always a good thing to do. Did mostly winning as well. I couldn't possibly say in case, in case this goes to our French friends. Uh, but tough luck. <laughs> uh, but my father's favourite regiment was the Scots Greys. And uh, right. particularly at Waterloo. So my obsession... You know, a macabre. Interesting. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, but um, they were based in Nottingham before Waterloo. They marched right. from Nottingham to Waterloo, funnily enough, and I live you know, at the castle right. uh, in, in, in Nottingham. So I feel a little bit uh, uh, connected to them. I did live in Scotland for a long while as well. But uh, Airfix never did Scots Greys. They right. did Hussars, British Hussars, for reasons unknown to mankind, right. when they should have done the Household Brigade or the Scots Greys. Yeah, yeah. And so I always wanted the Scots Greys, and so uh, as soon as I could, I, you made your own? I, I, I made my own. I yeah. can die happy. I've done the Scots Greys now. Yeah. So that that, that was one of and my. And that's that's a plastic kit, isn't it? And it, yeah. it does a variety of different cavalry. Regiments. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You can do the whole Union Brigade. Yeah. So it's just three regiments in one. But uh, so yeah, it is you are able to scratch that particular itch that you have. But there's enough people out there who also want the Scots Greys, you know. And uh, oh, of course. And uh, of course. it's an iconic regiment, right? Well, it's, it was. I, it's I, depicted a number of pub signs. Uh, well, there are an awful lot of paintings. I've got a lot of paintings in my game room of the Greys. And uh, one of the th accounts I did read of them, obviously on the 18th of June, they, they woke up having been soaked all night long, just uh, hanging onto their horses, uh, no shelter at all. And they get up and they don't have the commissariat hasn't come up. And finally it comes up just as it's, the sun's coming out and gets to 11 o'clock and uh, their colonel, I think was born in America, weirdly, of Scots parentage. He gave them all uh, a double gin ration. So they had a great big tumbler of gin, you know, and right. we're talking serious stuff. But then, as only a Scotsman could, then they gave the horses one as well. So they gave the horses <laughs> to, to ginger up all up. the horses, yeah. pack them up and ginger them up. They Ooh. gave them a guzzle of gin. So if you're a Frenchman at one o'clock marching up that hill, you're met by a half-pissed Scotsman real gin palace, yeah. on a half-pissed horse. I mean, that's not what you want. Well, Which probably explains why they went they all the way through. It didn't work out so well for them on the day. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, so a yeah, great piece of history there. There is, there is something about British cavalry, isn't there? You've got, these, you've got the great moments of British cavalry. Um, I don't know, the Charge of the Light Brigade, the Scots Greys at Waterloo. The, are, are there any good ones? The famously good ones. It's, mm, British cavalry, well, there are. There must be loads. I just caught me off, off my go. It's, uh, Salamanca, but they were the King's German Legion Hall Dragoons. Mm. They flattened the French there. Um, yeah, I'd say the, 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 the. I mean, I'm sure there are, but the, in terms of in, in in popular hit memory. Oh, light brigade, light brigade, and Waterloo for sure are the two big ones. Yeah, uh, and they're both disasters. Uh, uh, well, arguably, they, they, uh, the, the Waterloo one did break the back of uh, the French right, and and disrupted their guns for a long time. Long time they took. They you know they they they, they were in their gun lines for quite a while. One of the. British artillery lieutenants said in his thing that the, the Greys were in the French gun line for 20 minutes, which right. sounds like a remarkable time to me. I, I can't believe it's, it's well, right. There's a, whole, there's a whole cavalry corps on that flank just behind the infantry. Yes, right? all waiting so for orders to go and get yeah, them. Yeah, go and get but it looks like it took quite a time for them for, to actually for one get, of them to get, get, going, to get, get going. Yeah, because so. yeah, they, they hit front and flank. Yeah, well, yeah, it was yeah, awful. It's, for it's poor old yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, but yeah, no, iconic regiments and... Uh, I suppose uh, uh, Omdurman as well uh, with uh, Winston Churchill. Churchill's yeah, charge. Yeah, it's like two days before, I think, he gets involved in some little side skirmish. Yeah, well, and they're like the only casualties in the campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much, yeah. <laughs> charge of the 
was it 21st Lance? No, I can't remember what Lance was. It might have been, you know. Anyway. But yeah, so running a toy soldier company. Um, uh, I've been doing it for 14 years here with Warlord. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we do principally historical, which is bolt action and black powder. Black yeah. powder written by Jervis Johnson and Rick Priestley. And uh, it's, it's, you know, we've had it now for 13 years. It's sold remarkably well. And it's a, a very forgiving system because yeah. we, sort of, we sort of give that. So here's what we suggest and you can add to it or take away as you, as you wish. You know, yeah. we're, we're not the uh, rules Nazis who are going to come around and shout at you if you get it wrong. Yeah. Because almost always a gamer knows his army better than I would because uh, yeah, he's researched yeah. his Austrian army and I don't know anything about the Austrian army. So he knows army, this, this regiment know this, performed well at this So battle. I'm going to give them the valorous thing and all that. Yes. That's yeah. for you to sort out, mate. And I yeah. quite agree because you're the expert, not me. Yeah. So I can only do generic, nice vanilla rules. Yes. Which you add the, yeah. the fruit on top. And you can usually see Rick Priestley's influence, I feel, in systems that are, oh, that's, that are quite simple but have some granularity in them. Well, Rick... Gave to me a piece of paper when I was asking him about writing, mm -hmm. writing rules. And this applies to speeches, writing letters, giving, uh, talking to anybody, is the three things. Brevity, clarity, wit. And that's, for, that's what he wrote. Right. Uh, and he wrote it like that. Exactly. Yeah, it's like that. That's typical, Rick. Yeah, yeah. But I now use it with my more excitable members of staff who come in through the door to say, the "Penny, penny, the score, the, the 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 thunder, the, the the clouds are falling down, and it's the end of the world because yeah, this yeah. is gone." I said, "Right, brevity, clarity, wit. Is the building on fire? Yes or no? Well, no. Right. Okay, that's a good start. You know, and and it, in any report you're giving." Um, just do that, just giving you, that's what it is, clarity. And Rick always writes with great clarity, assuming that a game has never played a game before. Mm. Um, you know, and, uh, and he, he's been, he took all that from the Donald Featherstones and the Bruce Quarries from the 1970s. Bruce Quarry, you know, where, where again, there's no pedigree there. Well, they were polite gentlemen who, you know, Don Featherstone, who wrote nicely, because in, in those days, they all wrote. Brigadier Young, one of my heroes, I've got his, his book Charge over there, I think he's, his war games. Uh, rules. Brigadier Young, um, he went to war in 1939 with the Hertfordshire Regiment mm -hmm. and he said he had 600 men in his battalion, 1939, and only one couldn't read or write. One, he said, and we taught him. You know, right. so 600 men could read or write. I don't think you'll get that today. We've got kids coming out of school who still can't read or write, which is just, but this man in 1939 had 600 who could all read and write. Mm. The one he couldn't, he taught. And uh, the Brigadier Young, um, being one of my heroes, because as you, you guys will know, he led the uh, commandos at D-Day and at Dieppe and in uh, Italy and in Norway and in Burma in the end. He's out there. And uh, then, he, then he formed the Seal Knot Society, the English Civil War reenactment group. And uh, he was uh, one of the biggest reenactment groups. Well, yeah, it's Seal huge. Man. It was the second, second one ever in the, in the history of the world. He had two great quotes from him. He was on Desert Island Discs and uh, said that he thoroughly enjoyed World War II. <laughs> Strange man. <laughs> and the other thing he said, he could never shoot a German who didn't have a helmet on. So any bareheaded German, he couldn't shoot him. Just right. couldn't, couldn't bring himself to. Because that man wasn't ready to fight, presumably. I don't know. It must be depersonalising, have a coal scuttle helmet on, maybe. Yeah. It's, but it's an odd thing. But I think real soldiers don't take their helmets off. Movies, they take their helmets off. Real mm. ones don't want to die, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so they wear the helmet if, if Well, yes, presumably it might, it might well have been a way of surrendering or showing that your, the aggression yeah. is going down. I've dropped my helmet. Yeah. But he said, oh, I can never shoot German with that helmet. And no. uh, you think, what an interesting guy. <laughs> yes, yes. He but he, he wrote uh, a lot of the English, uh, early... Uh, Wargaming uh, rules, and uh, you know, when I was growing up in the 1970s, uh, late 60s, early 70s, there was just nowhere where you could find these war game rules. They didn't exist. You know? no. The wonderful Games Workshop didn't exist. Mm. There was no shops, or very few shops. This is before Chainmail or anything. Yeah. Were the WRG rules go back that far? Just. They were I, just coming out. I came then. in in 6th edition, which right. was the last they before were, it went all DBA. But you couldn't find them, because they were done by crazed old men who wouldn't want right. kids playing with them. They wouldn't, <laughs> right, want, right. wouldn't want a 15 year old kid like me playing with their game. Thank right. God it would be dull. Um, uh, but you'd have to go down. If, if you're lucky, you'd find a copy in your library and find, you know, uh, 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 Brigadier Young's book, Charge, or uh, I say, or Don Featherstone's books, or Bruce Quarry. Mm. He's great. I found a war games book. And then you have to find somebody else who was interested and find an opponent. But, right. uh, 
But yeah, with Airfix, I mean, Airfix, I mean, we talk about it all the time, but yeah, joy of Airfix, that every yeah. kid, working class, middle class, posh, kids could all buy large armies because they're all, you know, two shillings and sixpence or whatever a box set. And you've just released, or well, not just released, but you've done a Blood Red Skies using the using the Airfix kits. Yes. Which yeah. we just got hold of a couple of copies of yeah. that. Yeah. I was like, I'm a bit nervous because I remember the 172 airplanes from Airfix as a kid and I remember being covered in glue from head to toe um, and I'm hoping that the kits are simpler than I remember. <laughs> well, that's the same but kit. It, but <laughs> and, and I do, I forget sometimes, and I'd be interested to see what you say about this, as we, re like a lot of YouTubers, we've reviewed a lot of kits, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm very much come to the opinion that there's model kits and there's wargaming kits yes. and they're not the same thing. Correct. Um, and you know, you've seen the, the newer wargaming kits, they've got a lot of the detail on, but a wargamer, I think, is generally prepared to take simplicity of construction, is, is, is a big part of it. Mike, you're absolutely bang on. There's, there's a few people now doing uh, our scale, 156 bolt action, mm. and all of them are remarkably good. Uh, they're all good. Some are exemplary models, some are intermediate, uh, a couple of them are a little more simple than I'd like. But we certainly do the line of, why would I put wing mirrors on, on my, uh, my, my trucks? Because they're going to be broken off. As soon as you play, yeah, you're not, going to break them off. Robust enough. And, they, and they don't add to the story. Mm. You know, I know they had headlights on a stalk. Yeah. But yeah. They don't add to the story, do they? Um, Whereas the funny little triangle on the front of an Opal Blitz well, it's is iconic. quite distinctive. No, yeah. It's iconic. You know, I only worked out what it's for the other day. I don't, I don't know what it's for, it's but show, I know that it's there. It's show whether there's a convoy coming behind it or not. It's got the little round thing which shows that it's part of a convoy. And when it's oh. down, it's not. Things you learn. Hey, you might want to check on that, that, but it's something like that. Uh, but yes, but that's iconic, isn't it? I yes. would put that on. You put that on, and it's on your red truck. Because it's an got, Opal Blitz. I've got, yeah. But yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but so I wouldn't. But like you say, uh, those stalky uh, wing mirrors. Out, nah, nah. You know, so, some, some, even some lamps. Yes, they're just so fragile on the plastic yeah. kit. Well, when you actually look on photographs, you quite often see they're knocked off. They remove the lamps anyway. But, yeah. Or they, or the, you know, yeah. battle damage yeah. driving through the hedgerows yeah. and the box cars. They come there. Yeah. Um, so where, uh, when you're looking. Because you do rescale other people's kits and things like that, don't you? In some of the bolt action, the Italeri kits, are they not rescaled? No, uh, no, they're new, new, they're are they new, new, new makes. Yeah, we went into production with them. Now they've right. obviously got the, they've been going around for 54 years now, Italeri, very mm. good at what they do. No, they, they'd have to make new ones. Uh, I don't think it was all computer driven in those days. Right. Uh, so I, I, uh, they might have scanned them. Uh, they might have done some scanning to make them f bigger in scale, but in general, they were new kits. Right. So, uh, and do you do you approach that from a? Do you give? Do you just say, look, we would need a one seventy second tiger, or do you say, I, I want this kit to have no more than fifty pieces to fit yes. in this kind of pack? What it's, uh, Paul does all that. Who you'll see next, Paul right. Sawyer. You've got the joy right. of dealing with Paul from Mansfield, um, uh, who uh, tries to tell them what it is we want. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've got a war gaming company saying we want them robust. Mm -hmm. Yet detailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then they say, oh, yeah, we understand. Then they think, no, you don't. You haven't. <laughs> You've made it more detailed because you can't help yourselves because mm. you're great model makers. Yeah. Um, um, but a, mo a model of it's just the building of it is the experience, right? But for a war gamer, mm. I'm building it to have a nice model to play with. Correct. It's also similar, really weirdly. Um, again, a lot of your listeners and watchers will know the slight difference between model railroaders, model railway people, they make these beautiful locos and they weather them very carefully with pow powders and things mm. and they make the track and all that stuff. And the passengers are awful. They're yeah, wearing yeah, yeah. day glow this and bright pink faces. <laughs> yeah. so what are you thinking of? Mm. They look awful. And, and somehow it doesn't translate in their head. No. Uh, and it's a, perhaps a similar thing to war games that you know it's all about the, the model soldiers yeah you know, and the truck's got to look like an opal blitz but it doesn't matter if it looks it doesn't matter if it's not perfect mm. we don't care it's, right. it's the, what's going on who, who are you packing it with what's the idea of the truck so you mm. fill in the blanks i think these model railroaders do the same thing with their passengers yeah. and that you know and the and the coach drivers and things which are shocking yeah. yes absolutely john you're the man with all, with with all the power and all, and all the noise there's a lot of interesting ball action out there and a lot of your games we've seen plastic italians come out which is really nice to see and they're italian army in black shirts they're not just bears the jerry it's not just more elite units of these smaller nations and there's lots of rumors out there of other stuff on the horizons we're 
up and to see Project Z soon, I think, getting re-released. But is there anything you might be able to tell the viewers that they might not have heard about yet? Well, I can help with the Italians, flesh that out even more. There will be three plastic box sets in the end. All right. So we're doing Alpini as well. Uh, will they have skis? <laughs> no, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. They could do. It, 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 could it's do. never going to work on a war game set. It's the problem is no. you make ski troops in, okay, but they're not going to be your skiing. No, they won't be. But they're tough hombres. And the San Marco Marines who gave us a kicking it Are these Brooke. the frogmen from Alexandria, yeah? The, that bomb the battleship? Uh, they might have been the from that way? marine. They might be well be that marine battalion. But when we tried to take Tobruk with two uh, destroyers, they gave us a beasting. Uh, they were tough boys. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we we're redoing all the heavy weapons for them, all the breeder twenty mil cannons, and uh, and we got some uh, Eritrean and or Somali uh, colonial troops for them as well. Right. Who look really good, really scary, right. huge, big knives. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, it was a pretty disastrous campaign for the Italians. Yeah, yeah, both, I, well, both in the conquest of Eritrea. I wouldn't like to have come across some of these guys coming towards me. Oh, no, got no. Huge yeah. choppers. So they're uh, they're good. And then we'll be doing a second book for Italy uh, when. Italy changes sides and uh, oh, come right. over. So, and that will be all the Gothic line and Monte Cassino. So it'll right. be loads of Italian goodness. And the, the thing about an Italian army is it's the most flexible army in World War II because, of course, you can do Abyssinia and Ethiopia and uh, mm. um, the Western Desert to start with. Then you can do south of France in 1940 when they a bit of a stab in the back to the French. Mm. Then you do um, um, uh, 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 Greece, Yugoslavia, Balkans, then into Russia, of course, you know, whole yeah, divisions yeah, um, swallowed up there. Alpini battalions there, aren't oh, they? The Italian be, and, and then Italy yeah. itself, um, and uh, and then fighting against the, the Germans uh, later on. Mm. There were even, on D-Day, on the, on the day of D-Day, reading Lord Lovett's book from the commandos, there were 40,000 Italians in, Norm in France. 40,000 in all the coastal garrisons, because they, they decided when Italy flipped over in 43, they're stuck in France, full of Germans. So what are they going to do? So they said, oh, we'll stick with the Germans, because mm. what are you going to do? Well, and Mussolini was running a puppet state yeah, in the North yeah, of Italy yeah. so for a while. They could technically say they were fighting for him. For Il Duce. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the old... Uh, um, so lots more to see with the plastic with, with, with uh, the loads more vehicles as well yeah so bolt action lots more to see um uh, more hungarians coming out um look for some very nice stks the 250s the little little mini animags seven different versions of those coming out in so there's like an armored car version and a mortar car and all that you've got it and is this going to be in plastic then? oh yeah there's, there's a multi-part single plastic seven different game. versions it's going to look that, like that's that's something it's so and, cute and they because they're from the recon battalions yep. which are in each of the panzer yep. divisions F five five man crews i think yeah it's yeah. when i scale it up to it's interesting it is it's small it's like a bren carrier it's just like i'm not much taller than a bren carrier no. but it's the same it does have a turret though. same well, one of them though. does yeah only one of them does uh but um uh, yeah it's like a bren carrier is the only way of describing it really mm. in, in use so that's very nice and then um Humber armor car to come out for the Brits and a two 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 for the Germans because we've been late. So these them. are again the, the kind of iconic smaller armor yeah, cars. Yeah, which would be great. The so, so, two, they won't, two, so they won't dominate the battlefield. Yes, yes. I often find with my with my Germans in bolt action, I've got Puma and it's nice, but it's quite expensive as a as a as a um, uh, in points. So but, I'd quite like a small armor. But it's such a glorious armor car, the Puma, isn't well, it? Well, because it's a tank. <laughs> <laughs> Who can't love that Puma? It's a beautiful model as well, um, and it's very powerful. Yeah. You're like you've got a second tank, but you do pay for it in points. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, if you want to, so I've got some paratrooper army. They're all veterans. You know, this is an. Ex I've got a very small model count, and. But they can put the firepower out, can't they? Sometimes oh, they can, and they don't. They don't. They two MG forty two is a squad, and they don't yeah. die easily until the other guy's got a Churchill with a petard mortar. And you think, yeah, well, this is a thirty model game. <laughs> What's that doing here? But it's yeah, it's, it's good fun. They're bringing up the Churchill. So then the Germans, I've got to say, get the Churchill. You know, pounds of mm. Faust, oh, mine it, game. whatever yeah. it is. You know, it's, yeah. it's what flips it around. So yeah, we've got Pro uh, uh, Project Z or Project Z for you Americans. Yeah, um, coming out, and that's, that's a that's a re-release, re-release, straight re-release. Nothing, Fair nothing release. new, nothing yeah. fancy. Mm -hmm. Just one, one new vehicle added. That's all. Motorcycle gang in there, which is great, great fun. Um, some nice scenery, shopping mall, and things like that in there. Uh, so that's good. 
So you know, there's you, you know there's there's rumors. We everybody went. Uh, we like everybody else went nuts for the the epic scale. Oh right, the, the there's, there's obviously you created a brand there. Yes, it's it's the epic. The expectation is it's more than just the American Civil War. That was just a place to start. Yeah, um, interesting. The, the epic scale thing is uh, that was one of those things that came to me one evening when I was watching some videos of. American Civil War reenactments because mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of reenactment and I, I like watching them. Yeah, I, I think it's great. And I was seeing, uh, it wasn't Gettysburg, but it was a big battle in America mm -hmm. with 4,000, 6,000 people on the field. And I was watching the Union lines come on, you know, two deep, you know, and six or seven regiments brigaded up coming forward. And I was thinking, they look nothing like toy soldiers. And this is the real thing. I'm watching a, a real thing in vertical, real. The drill's correct. And, the, and of course, and they're, they're in genuine shoulder. close order. They they're are actually touching elbows. Yeah, are, and then, yeah. so any light you'd see between them is then completely fixed by the second rank. Yeah. Who stop, so you can't see anything apart from a blue wall coming at you. I'm thinking, yes. yeah, but I've got American Civil War in 28, and they look rubbish compared to this mm. because war gamers just space them all out, and it's ridiculous. Mm. Now, I thought, well, and then I thought, well, 15 mil gamers, they're getting closer, but. They use the same amount of models as in 28 mil, so they've still got 24 figure battalions, mm. not, you know, 86 or 104, yeah. despite it being so much cheaper, and they spread the models out again. Mm. You know, so you, it always looked like a, a thin skirmish line coming towards you, and I thought, well, that's not right. Mm -hmm. Then I remembered, um, can you remember Warmaster by Games Workshop? Yes. Done yeah. by Rick, yeah? All the, all the goblins and everything. All They're on strips. Strips. I thought, that's it. It's mm. got to be done. That's, so I suddenly thought, so... For two and a half years, I kept banging on Paul's door saying, right, we've got to do this. Right. And he said, oh, yeah, we won't. And then he'd sneakily take it off the list again. Right. I'd say, where's right. the American source? Oh, yeah, we haven't quite got room for that this year. So three, three, it's three years, actually. And so I said, right, OK, boss's privilege. Sorry, mate, you're nicked. We're doing it. And he said, OK, boss, we're going to do it. And then once he, I said it, he was right behind it. But uh, he was a bit sceptical, uh, I'd say. Uh, but I thought, mm. no, again, build it and they will come. It would be great. Mm. So we talked about the sizing of it all and everything else, how it would look. And then we put it together. And before long, you had 2,200 models and uh, God knows how many cannons in one box. Yeah, there's an extraordinary <laughs> number of models in that. And, you know, and it was 2,200 models and it's 100 quid or 90 quid when we first and bought it, it And out. it's 100 figure regiments. Yeah, or 80, or 80 oh, or 100, yeah. Some, something of, of that. And of course, but again, we, we, we don't tell you how big the regiments have to be. We suggest it's five, mm. but you could easily do seven or nine yeah. Yeah. Or, f or smaller, three, if, yeah. if you've got a small table. I've had one of the conventions that's often using black powder, because we've only just started with black powder ourselves, is one base per stamina rating. Oh, so well, that yeah. as you've got the different regiments, you can quickly yeah, identify. That's, that, yeah, that could, that, that if could be If that's four done. bases, it's got a stamina Yeah, no, four. that could work. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's gone very well. It's been out for seven months now, I think. And it's uh, we certainly reprinted it, which is mm -hmm. nice. And uh, we're going to revisit the uh, cavalry because we had to bring out the, the, the cavalry in metal in the end because we just didn't have the yes. money to tool everything up in plastic. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at it, of course, it's just one frame. With and we did it the old airfix trick. Plastic doing, frame of infantry. Yeah, of it. it's, yeah, it's, yeah. And we did the old it's two different colours. Yeah. Blue and grey, that's a homage to airfix, so a bit of a gag. But also means you can get out and start playing straight away on Boxing mm. Day. You just stick them in their bases. Yeah, because I think the bases were go. green as well. Yeah, exactly. the, the so we tried to be as green. nice as we could. Pre coloured flags, off you go. Mm. Bish bash bosh. And um yeah, so the flag sheet was the best thing in that box. And the flag sheets. The flag sheet in that box was lovely. Well, you put them on and you, you're ready to go, aren't you? And yeah. they're so easy to paint, I have to say. You know, it's, we've had great fun painting those. So, yeah, that's gone well. And that, that does um, that opens up extra places for us to go. Yes. Um, tooling was reasonable for that because it was just one tool. If you do other periods, and another period I'd like to do would be an ancient one, you know, I'd, I'd see Romes against Romes against Celts. That would be rather nice, you know, the, the different but lines. But if you did like phalangites, that's going to cover a lot of people. It or, would. Or hoplites yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you hoplites cover, would be good. There's a lot of... Uh, seven Years War, everybody wearing the same bloody... Everybody's got a tricorn. Everybody's got a tricorn. And a ponytail. And, uh, yeah, and who's to tell the difference in facing? Just paint them, what's wrong with you all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Napole Napoleonics would be tricksy because you'd have to make an awful lot of frames because everybody's got different bloody uniforms, particularly if you come to the French. You know, French cavalry, all different stuff. and uh, Can be done, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's... Uh, it's more, but isn't that where your fiddly. new resin process can come in, in that you you can make some smaller runs of things? You, yeah, it's uh, the resin thing is interesting. It works... 
well for certain sized things. Right. Um, it's not the panacea that I'd hope for. Mm -hmm. It's very good for making man-sized things. Right. Uh, anything smaller, it's uh, it's a bit more tricksy. Right. But it could be done. I'm not saying it can't be done. But but even like the the um, blood red skies aircraft, a lot of them are in the yeah, in you the, saw the, in blue, the bendy resin. You saw the blue and white ones being yeah. made, the dauntlesses and the zeros. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're the beautiful. Ones. Now we've really cracked it there. Mm. The panel lines on the aircraft are lovely. It's not yeah. we exaggerated them to begin with in metal, and now these are really nice. So you feel you've really nailed that process. Ninety percent. Yeah, it's uh, it's taken us a couple of years to get it right because it is a new process. Mm. Um, but uh, so yeah, so there's lots to be done with Epic and 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 well, all manner of stuff. Uh, I um, we got some new um, three new Hail Caesar books coming out: a Macedonian one, uh, a Arthurian one, and another one which I forget. An oh, Arthurian a one is that like Bernard Cornwell's Arthur? Or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And a bit of yeah. that kind of feel to it. So that's three I know. A bit of. Dark Age, Dark Ages. Age. And we've uh, one of our pals is writing a Lanschnecki period one for Pike and Shot. Right. Which would be nice, and he's going to include also something I'm going to love, which is the Anglo-Irish-Scottish Wars as well, the Henry VIII and Elizabethan stuff. Which oh right, I love, right. I particularly love. When we're still using bows, and the rest of Europe have moved on yeah. to muskets. Yeah, whereas the Irish are still throwing javelins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> uh, using two-handed swords. Yeah, look, nice. I showed some of those um, gala glasses to somebody mm. the other day. I said, what period are these? Of course, they said Normans. I said, no, it's about, 50, about 8, 1500. 15 to 1800. Yeah. I said, guys, this is what they're walking around with. And, and they hit you with a bloody big sword. It still hurt. Yes. And, um, but yeah, and they're barefoot. Just extraordinary. Yeah. Tiny horses, no saddles. Yeah. Just like something out of, I don't know what. But uh, it suited their, mate, their life and their way of warfare. But it's great doing the mod. I've got a huge Elizabethan And it really looks really different from oh, the armies of the period. When, when I bring some of the lads around to play, they, they, I say, you know, I say, well, it, you've got a horde army here, you know. And here's your tough guys who are your gala classes. You know, mm -hmm. you make sure you get them into action. Mm -hmm. But they normally save them as a, as a reserve, which is the wrong thing to do. Get them in, get them in, get them in, get them in. Because the rest of the army might be running before oh, they get in. They are, because the English cavalry is lancing them to death. Death, yeah, yeah, and pistoling them and everything else and grape shotting them. So, but it's great period. Uh, right, John, we're kind of coming. With, thanks for all your time. We're going to leave a couple of couple of fun questions to finish with. So the first one is: you've got a huge range of models here. What's your favourite model? I have two favourite models. Two. One is the Primus Pilus uh, who, with our Roman uh, centurion stabbing forward with a sword, which we made very early on, 14 years ago. He just looks a, a hard devil. I love him. Uh, right. And the second one is a little, a little more peaceable. In our Napoleonic range, uh, I did a bit of a gag. I did two of the camp followers, one French one and one British one, mm -hmm. and it's called the Carrot and the Stick. So All it's right. got a stubborn donkey, which is not moving, and the beautiful French Vivandier is, is giving it some carrots like this, saying, come on, you know. Uh, uh. And the other one is a, <laughs> a rather largish Irish woman, almost certainly from the uh, uh, Inniskillen Regiment, battering it with an with a umbrella to get it to move. Right. It's, it's such a fantastic model, right. um, full of character. Uh, and she's wearing a soldier's coat, you know, she's one of these women yeah, who could yeah. carry anything and were and built the empire type thing. Yeah. So that's my favourite, my favourite too. If you can find a picture of those two. Um, we'll see what we can do. see what you can uh, find. Uh, uh, both available from Warlord Games, I believe. So. Funnily enough, they are. Funnily enough, yeah. Uh, all right. And, and to, to, fi to finish then, um, you've yep. covered a vast, in, in your collection, there's a vast range of periods and models that you've got. But if you were able to commission, and indeed you are, of course, in a position to commission what game doesn't exist, that, that you want. What's, what? what's the period of history or, or sci-fi genre or whatever that you'd I'll really tell you, like to see? I'll tell you the one I would like and I'm not saying it's not going to come from us either because it will. Uh, <laughs> when we were young and we were once uh, all of those now slightly naff uh, World War II films Guns of Navarone um, uh, where he Ice was Cold there. and Alex? Uh, oh, well, that was good. That was a good one. That was a okay. proper one. No, all the, Iron, all, the I don't know this... all the action films. Right. Uh, Cross of Iron, uh, where individuals make a difference, uh, yeah. a big difference, and they're heroic. I would like to see a version of Bolt Action very much like that, but not in a two sides, a cooperative game. Mm -hmm. So you've got, say, three of you doing a, a three commando squads. San Lazar say, you've got to get to the pumps, you've got to get to that, you've got to stop the reinforcers. Off we go, and the Germans are run like goons, like in uh, 
escape from cold, it's where they move randomly around. Right, and they're not, right. And they're like stormtroopers, they're not very good at shooting at people. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's not realistic, but it's not meant to be. It's a yeah. great game when you win, not by killing lots of Germans, because you're firing Tommy gun bursts to take three or four mm. down at once. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. one to one. Uh, but you win by helping your mates reach an objective. Right. If you don't always give them supporting fire, well, okay, that's all right. Uh, but as long as you get your objective. Will it involve the phrase, for you, the war is over? Oh, I think a lots of great characters are Germans. <laughs> and, uh, and gallant Brits, obviously. And, uh, plucky chaps. Plucky chaps. Well, really and well. on that happy note, uh, this was John Stallard. Thank you very much, John. You're welcome. And well done. So if you like bolt action and you're looking to start the system or start a new army, on our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk we have a range of the starter sets as well as a few of the starter armies. Do consider buying from us as a way of supporting the channel. Thank you for watching.